What's going on, guys? Oofski here. We're taking a look at the Dom Rick Dom high grade today. Starting right off, we've got the old art style, much more uniform, less digital painting like the Revives would have. Originally made in 2006, but spanning a blue Bandai badge. So with any luck, we'll have better plastic, better moldings, and I'll make up for any age this kit might show. Being the Dom, Rick Dom, we have parts to swap out to make it either one, looks like. Regular Dom foot, and then the more defined space boosters on the back for the Rick Dom, which is the space type. We can see we've got those much larger veneers and boosters for the Rick Dom versus the ground type just has the hover bits. We've got the, the beam bazooka for the Rick Dom, and then the Dom has a regular giant bazooka. A couple different sets of hands. The molding lines on these hands looks really nice, and I always love the details on the feet, even though you don't always get to see the feet. I'll just have to pose them better, I guess. You can see some lovely hidden boosters, verniers, like hidden in the skirting. That's a nice detail. Let's open her up. Introduced in the original Mobile Suit Gundam anime and developed by Zimod, the Dom was the solution the Principality of Xeon needed to the otherwise low mobility of their ground mobile suit forces. And thus the Dom was born, and later it was outfitted for space during mass production and became the Rick Dom. Now fun fact, the Dom was not supposed to be the mass produced spacesuit of the main Xeon force. It was actually going to be the Gelgoog. But after the RX line of mobile suit was introduced, the Xeon Top Brass wanted to make sure they had a mobile suit that had beam capabilities. The Gelgoog did not, had to go back into R&D, and thus the Dom was selected to be turned into the Rick Dom. While we're talking about fun facts, that yellow little badge on its chest is actually just supposed to be a flashbang type uh, scattershot beam emitter. And it was mistakenly animated as shooting an actual beam in one of the episodes of the anime, which is a neat little detail. We have normal sandwiching hands for all of the weapons. I wish these connections on the hands were a little sturdier. They do pop out a lot. I had to reset this a few times. Not such a glaring issue, but one that I wish it could have just been solidified a little better. Overall, though, the Dom really doesn't show its age that much for being a 16-year-old kit. Some of the molding on the kit for the actual runners does look a little slovenly, though, and that makes me wonder if maybe we've reached the end of the line with using these particular molds to reproduce this kit. And I would not be surprised if down the road in the future, we get a revive kit just to refresh the molds. Last one, we have that heat saber. Again, just a different sandwiching hand. You can grab that, pull it right off its back. It's mounted between the boosters. The heat rod was actually a pretty fragile weapon, and they would just discard them on the battlefield. We've seen the Dom, but now let's transform this guy into the Rick Dom. As far as armaments go, we're going to swap out this bazooka for this big old boy. The stress marks on this are pretty bad. I really don't like these long parts like this for the guns. That's a failing that we routinely see with high-grade weaponry. But it's going to be oriented like this most of the time, so you're not going to see it. There's kind of a good, bad, and ugly situation going on with the transformation. Take a bit the Rick Dom. So first off, the good is that this little plate on the backpack just pops out. Because here we have the normal jets for the ground type Dom. We'll just pop that part out. 
and then we have our replacement pieces here. Pop that PCF back in here. Then we will orient our larger boosters. These are space boosters. That's why they're bigger. And boom, there we have it. And these even move, which is sick. You can see the boosters under the skirting. So that's the good. The bad, we have to pop this out, physically take off the skirting. We got our other skirting. This is much longer. I just broke that part. <laughs> okay, sick. So just be mindful of that. That's okay. We're going to leave that in the video. You can see the beautiful, that, those parts again. We'll slide that on. Come on now. Pop that on. And now the ugly, the feet. So we have our normal propulsion hover system here on the feet, and we've got a booster foot for the space type Rick Dom. These plates are in here. This is like an Apple box. There is no space to get in there. I tried using some tweezers. Couldn't really get in there. I don't want to mess with it because I don't want to break anything else, but... Just know, you just swap this plate out unless you're going to actually like pose it. And you can pose him pretty well. So, I mean, just be mindful of which foot you want. Now, let's throw him on the turntable. Now, in terms of color separation, this kit is color accurate to the anime. This is just an older kit, though. So, the colors and designs were not so great. It wasn't until that fat cash infusion that they got when Zeta was coming out and then even more so in those gorgeous designs from Shara's Counter-Attack that we got to see actual better animated more detailed mobile suits getting churned out and even then a lot of our grunt suits uh the Jigen for example from Shara's Counter-Attack still has a pretty flat design but they're lovely and timeless and the Dom here and the Rick Dom have tons of great details that if you take the time, you can really make this thing pop. The hands are molded beautifully. You can detail those. The veneers under the pant legs on the armor underneath the skirting can be painted with copper, silvers, reds, the boosters on the back. There are so many great details that you can make this kit pop. All of those large swaths, you need to throw some water slides on there. I really love this kit. It's awesome, and I think if you take the time with it, it'll look really great. Now, all in all, for a kit that came out in 2006, this guy has a lot going for him. He moves well, he's got extra parts. You can do two different forms with him, albeit to varying levels of changing the parts out. And despite how stocky the Dom is, it moves pretty well. The skirting is flexible on both sides, allowing the legs to get up there pretty well, all in all. You can even... The connection on the foot isn't the sturdiest, but, I mean, how often do you really need them to be in poses like this anyway? The shoulders move independently of the arms, allowing you to set up some good poses or have them turn around if he really needs to reach. And the arms move very well. One thing I don't like is that and the head doesn't have much options. Again, this is from 2006, so it's not like the paradigm of excellence. I could not honestly compare this to like the origin kit, but you just pop off the top and you can swivel the eye a little bit. Front, side, side, however you want it, it'll still move. 
the real grade Zeong just has me kind of spoiled. But we're not comparing it to that. All in all, this is an awesome kit for being 16 years old. And I'd really recommend it to any classic Universal Century Xeon fans or anyone else who might have an interest in the kit. It's got lots of large swaths. You could use this as a really nice like scribing practice kit, or it's got lots of room for water slides or other such customizations. The potential is limitless. And as always, if you guys are interested in picking up a thick purple boy like this guy or maybe something else or something entirely different, head on over to LeapingPandaHobbies.com. That's LeapingPandaHobbies.com. Use my promo code EGGHEAD. It'll all be down below in the description. Get yourself 10% off a box of Handsome Little Men today. And I will see you later this week with another video. Thank you guys so much for watching.